All right, going to do a video refuting the Calvinist eisegesis regarding Acts chapter 9, verse number 15, because they like using that verse to try to deny free will in the context of salvation. And Acts chapter 9, verse number because Calvinism is built on eisegesis. Uh, eisegesis is when you basically in, insert your own doctrine, you read your own doctrine into the text, instead of letting the text explain itself. Essentially, when you're preaching the Bible from an eisegetical uh, type stance, you're not preaching what the Bible says, you're preaching what you want the Bible to say, essentially. That's what it comes down to. And Calvinism is guilty of this. Nearly all the proof texts of Calvinism are used in the base, uh, from the basis of eisegesis. So let's get right into it. So Acts chapter 9 verse number 15 is the one is one uh, passage you like using. Uh, and it says in the verse there, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So they home in on the thing of chosen vessel, and they try to use that as, See, you know, uh, Paul was chosen for salvation, therefore, you have no free will, God chooses you for salvation. You know, you hear, you'll hear Calvinists say that. But what's going on there in the text? The choosing in this verse has nothing to do with Calvinistic unconditional election. Okay, the choosing in this text is related to service to Christ. Okay, it's not talking about salvation. Acts chapter 21, verses 18 to 19. Okay. Some proof on that. See, this is what Calvinism doesn't do when they when they twist their when they uh, twist scripture to prove their doctrine. They will look for you know proof text taken out of context, and they won't compare and cross reference scripture. Okay, Acts chapter twenty one, verses eighteen to nineteen. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. Okay. Romans chapter 1, verses 13 to 15. Romans chapter 1, verse 13 to 15. Now I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I, pur uh, I purpose to come unto you, but I was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debt debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise, so as much as in me is... I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Okay, not good at reading on a computer, but we see there, again, a holding of service. Uh, Romans chapter 15, verses uh, 20, or sorry, Romans chapter 15, verses 15 down to verse 21. Romans chapter 15, verses 15 down to verse 21. Nevertheless, brethren, uh, I have written, uh, the more, written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. I have therefore whereof I may, I have therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. Therefore, I will not, I will not dare to speak of any of, the, of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum I'm probably not saying that right, not good at pronouncing some of these words, uh, I have fully preached uh, the gospel of Christ so uh, yet, so yea, uh, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not that have not heard shall understand. Again, we see that Christ chose Paul for service. Uh, further proof of this: Ephesians chapter three, verse one to eight. Also, a good proof text on dispensationalism. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if we have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, you were, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in a few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power, uh, unto me, sorry, unto me, whom less than uh, less than the least of all saints in this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the un unsearchable riches of Christ. So, what was the choosing in that in uh, Acts chapter nine verse number fifteen is related to service to Christ. It's not talking about uh, salvation and God choosing for salvation. Okay, Paul was already saved before that that. Uh, before he was told that, basically. But 
uh, more proof that this is not talking about salvation is a simple fact that all unsaved sinners are dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 3, but they have the ability to seek God. You can see that in Acts chapter 8 verse 27 to 28, in Acts chapter 10 verse 1 to 3, and they are called to salvation. You can see that in Acts chapter 11 verse 18, and Acts chapter 15 verse 17. Okay, uh, God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Second Peter chapter three verse nine. You know, God takes no pleasure in, pleasure in the death of the wicked. Ezekiel chapter thirty three verse eleven. Okay, there's so many scriptures that prove that God uh, wants everyone to be saved, and that Jesus Christ, His, uh, his he, you know, Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for everybody's sins. Okay, now just because He He died for everybody does not mean that everybody goes to heaven. Okay, because that's one of the things Calvinists like to use against you. Is they'll say, well, if Jesus Christ died for everybody, then you know that may, that must mean everybody's going to heaven. They'll accuse you of universalism. No, because Jesus Christ died for the false prophets according to Second Peter chapter two verse one, but they're still unsaved. Okay. Uh, Jesus Christ made salvation available to everybody. Okay, that's what that's what I mean when I say that. But you have to believe the gospel. You have to call upon the name of the Lord. Okay, First uh, Timothy chapter four verse ten is a good verse on that. How he's uh, you know he's a savior of all men, especially to those that believe. It says in that text there. But don't be deceived by Calvinism and don't be deceived by their eisegesis of Scripture, uh, because it, it comes down to them just reading their own theology into the text instead of letting Scripture explain what Scripture says. They have to tell the Bible what it says, pretty much. So. No different than Catholicism, which, by the way, Calvinism is just Augustinianism, which also is where Catholicism has its roots. So, which in turn comes from Gnosticism, which is a whole other video in and of itself. So anyway, don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.